Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. He in the ring against Evanison. Uh, it was a good performance, you know, a good comeback uh, fight. I ain't fighting a year, so felt good to be back in the ring. Felt good to be home. You know, the crowd was loving it. You know, I'm glad to be back. Uh, JP Miranda with LatinoSports.com. Congratulations to you, uh, Boots. Congratulations to Bozy. Uh, did you find yourself at any point during the fight or even just coming out to the, to the ring in awe of the amount of fans, the love, and the support that you were receiving? Yeah, it was it was dope. You know, it was a great experience coming out to uh, you know coming out, walking out in front of my friends and family, supporters at this big arena. You know, it was it was a blessing. You know, I was I was taking it all in. All right, well, second secondary question. No Diddy. Yo. 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 Oh, that, that, what'd you say? My bad. <laughs> Excuse my French. Uh, 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 um, uh, Ms. Eddie Hearn said that he had, you guys had a face uh, time with uh, the Excellency um, and discussed the fight, possible fight with uh, Bud Crawford. Yeah. If that fight was next, would you be interested in fighting that fight at 154 pounds? Like I always say, I don't care. I, I just want to fight the top guys, the best guys. They're going to bring the best side out of me. And, not these these guys that's on the lower level. You know, when you fight somebody that's sharp and good like you, you know, it make you better. Who knows? You know, the fight could be easier. You know, when you fight somebody on your level or or supposed to be up above your level. Uh, James Bell here at the Bison Source. So first off, that was wild that last one. Uh, yeah. But oh, my, uh, my question to you is uh, reference to David of uh, <laughs> What did you see from him in those first couple of rounds where? you were able to make the proper adjustments? Because he was looking tough in those first couple of rounds, but once you got comfortable, you were able to see or get his timing down and be able to score that knockdown in the fifth round. Uh, I ain't going to lie. He was he was moving a lot more than I expected him to move. You know, uh, but he's going to come forward a little more. You know, uh, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did he do anything? Uh, that surprised you in the ring? Any adjustments you had to make? That's the first question. And the second one is talk to us about your last fight being at, in Atlantic City at, at the Boardwalk Hall and then coming here to a, an arena where, according to your promoter, fans were still lining up to buy tickets as you were walking out to the ring. Yeah, Um. well, your first question, Um. he didn't really... I mean, I seen everything he was doing. I just that's just me being, you know, my time being a little off. Like I said, I didn't think my time was gonna be off, but it was, you know. But um, I seen everything my pop was telling me, telling me catch and slip. I just my time was just off a little bit, but everything be good, you know. Next time be better and sharper, you know, on point. And uh, but yeah, like you said, um, coming from the fighting the AC in a small arena and then coming here to fight into Philly in my hometown to a big arena. Definitely a big difference, you know. Uh, it's way better, you know, uh, way better atmosphere, you know. Um, and I'm glad I was able to do it, you know, and put on a show in front of my friends and family. Hey, Jaron, two two quickies over here. Over here. Hey. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, fully drawn right now. <laughs> <laughs> we we drawn right now, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first one is obviously I've been talking to you for years and years, and uh, you've dropped about this moment, you know, fighting here in this arena. Was it everything that you thought would be? Yeah, it was every it was everything. In, you know what? I ain't even gonna see that. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it was it was it was it was great though. You know, it was everything. You know, I, I always thought it was gonna be. You know, like I said before, I I had just rung the bell here in March. You know, uh, for the Sixers game. And I told my security, I was like, yo, I said, I'm going to sell this place out. And uh, a month later, did the partnership. Miss uh, Eddie brought me home, you know, and you now I did it, you know. And the second one, when that fifth bell and you went to end the round, did you think that uh, the fight was over? What were your thoughts going back to the corner? And were you surprised that the fight was uh, done after the fifth round? No, I knew I knew I was going to stop him. I was just, every round, I, I felt him breaking down and decreasing, you know. Um, but I, I definitely... No, I was gonna stop him. It, just, it was just a matter of time, you know. I just had, had to get in my bag a little bit, you know, um, pick it up a little more, and you know, that's about it. Yo, boots. Um, Miguel with Town Sports and Entertainment. 
Um, everybody's been asking about grades for your performance in the ring, but uh, I just want to ask an unorthodox question. Uh, you know, it's your first fight with Eddie. Mm -hmm. um, you're here at home. You had a great sellout crowd. Obviously, you were excited. You said um, it was a dream come true. Can you just give Eddie an uh, uh, early grade for your first fight with, <laughs> with Matchroom? Eddie, an early grade? Give, you want me to give him a grade? Give him a grade as a promoter. Uh, right. So far. At A++++++. plus 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 plus. <laughs> what about you? What about you, Bozy? Yeah, I, I, the great argument is 10. <laughs> 10, 10, 10, 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, what, I'm, so, Eddie, I'm listen, so glad we're, we're, what, this is live what, around what the is, world. Listen, <laughs> and what about... And well, what, listen, what, Eddie, uh, Eddie um, he know what he's doing, man. He's yeah. one of the, the greatest uh, promoters out here today. He knows yeah. exactly what he's doing, man. Yeah. That's why you see a lot of uh, fighters is coming to him. You know what I mean? And a lot of them follow behind boots. I think I'll say this as well. You know, they say that... A trainer is only as good as his fighter. Uh, I'm not, you know, but also a promoter is also only as good as his fighter. And the reality is, is you need quality fighters. You need a big TV deal, and you need great fighters. And you know what we saw tonight was just. I think that, you know, I said to you guys, I'd love to take all the credit and boots with the, but no one anticipated that. Honestly, you know, we were in a coin flip to do the Leah chorus or here. And it was like, let's go big. We've got to make a statement. You know, I'm thinking, oh, let's do seven, 8,000, please, please. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like 10, then the, the top tiers open. And then like, honestly, they were queuing on his ring walk out there tonight. Like it was, it was unbelievable. And I just love it. You know, I love just looking around and just standing in the ring and watching boots come out, you know. As well. And it, we've done so many homecomings and it ain't easy. You know, and I know that he felt his timing was off, but also, you know, you're looking around and he's smiling <laughs> and he's here and he's there. It's, yeah. like, it's hard, you know, you really have to be in a fight. You've got to be real zoned in. And a lot of that comes from knowing the opponent's dangerous, I think, as well. But it's difficult on a homecoming, you know. Done so many with Anthony Joshua where he's sort of walking out. Oh, my God, yeah, oh, yeah. And it's like, whoa, whoa, come on, you know. And that was a great experience for him tonight because next time he's in, in front of a crowd like that, it will be a much bigger test. Hello, Boots. How you doing, man? Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate you, it. You and your dad. Um, you might you say your time was off, but I, I noticed you were having some fun. What were you and Sean Porter talking about between the second and third round? No, I, I know just, you were talking to him. <laughs> no, I just laughed at him. <laughs> I think he said something. I just laughed. I just smiled. Like I'm aware of everything that be going on when I'm in the ring. You know, I'm I'm comfortable in there. So I didn't. See, he didn't. He didn't say anything. I just left. I mean, I didn't say anything. I just left at him. Yeah. Uh, Joe Wood, Edge of Philly Sports. So you talk about going big. Um, obviously, Crawford is a huge step up in an opponent. Uh, is there any possibility maybe coming back to Philly and doing one of the larger stadiums with Crawford? Well, that would be nice. Across the road. You know, look, the, just, just to make it clear, for me, the number one priority is to unify the division. Right? Because... He's going to move to 54 at some point. But you don't really want to go before you've taken care of business. So we know that, you know, and, and that's when he, I said the conversations with his excellencies tonight was he said, look, do you think Boots will fight Crawford? I said, yeah. Send a contract. I said, yeah. Here's what he said. Send a contract. Said, so that was his I, I, contract. I said, send a contract. Yeah. So that's for next year, but we're going to fight again in October, November. And I said to his excellency, maybe if you want, we'll go co-main event on Bivol Betterbeef in October out there, you know? Or we can come back here. But I'll tell you what, you know, I've, I've not thought about that. I mean, him versus Boots at the ballpark, he, him versus Crawford at the boot ballpark, fuck me. I mean, this table's about to jump jump up in a minute. That's got me really excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wait a minute. No, did he? No, did he? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I should have said it first. I'm just learning, slowly. I'm from, I'm from England. I'm from England, sorry. Yo, you're crazy in this joint, yo. <laughs> hey, what's, what's up, fellas? Uh, congratulations on the, on the win. Um, this is Najee from Cigar Talk. Um, I hate to be this guy, but it's, it's viral on Twitter. Terrence Crawford uh, put out a tweet. He said, uh, world-class fighter. Um, he, he was questioning your status as a world-class fighter. I just wanted to get the, you know, your reaction to that, both uh, Bozy and Boots. No, what you mean? I didn't hear none. Yeah, he, he just put out a tweet, said, world-class fighter Honda, double standards are crazy. And he added Eddie Hearn. World-class Honda? What does he, what does he mean? Yeah, he, he said world-class fighter. I guess world he's trying to say fighter. if you're a world-class fighter. 
<laughs> sign a contract. <laughs> exactly, sign a contract. All he, all he had to do is, is is fight him and find out if he world class fight or not. Yo, yeah, if he I'm gonna say it's, I get it. It's just if, viral, if so it's something want, I can't, you know, we can't ignore that. If he wanted to fight, he would have stayed at 47. And, and he, I, he obviously said he already said he already said he said he wanted to move up in combat to be undisputed at 54 or something like this. Know that. If he wanted to fight, he would have stayed at 47. And, and he, I, he obviously said he already said he already said he said he wanted to move up in combat to be undisputed at 54 or something like that. So, I, yeah, he definitely did say that too. Exactly. Yeah. We ain't even worrying about right now. We ain't worrying about Crawford. We gonna clean 147 now. Then we gonna move to 154. If he there and he got a belt, we coming after him. Simple as that. Simple as that. David Melandro, Sports Talk Philadelphia Boots. Can you talk about your entrance tonight, especially going with the Undertaker theme? Yeah, I mean that's the second. Yeah. That's the, that's my thing now. You know, uh, Epic. <laughs> yeah, it's Undertaker. You know, uh, that's that's the walkout. When you hear that, you know, you know what time it is. It's work time. CBG. Um, Maurice Jones, Four Corners Boxing here. First of all, congratulations on your homecoming boots. We know a lot of guys who's having uh, homecomings, they have failed. You know, you just see Matias didn't put on a great performance. And uh, this, this is a two-part question. First one goes out to your dad, Coach Bozy. Um, you predicted five. Yeah, four and then, or five. I told Eddie. You said four, you said Eddie. no later than five. Oh, you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. That's right. So uh, we're gonna need those lottery numbers to get <laughs> on tonight because you were spot on the money. Yeah, and, yeah. And um, two boots. Um, we seen that he was a little bit difficult at some points. You know, he tried to go in there and bang a little bit, but you know the body shots started to work work on, in your favor. What was it that you noticed at certain points in the fight? Like, okay, I know he can't handle my power. And just listening to your dad in the, in the corner, that you know you can work smarter, not harder. Uh, I, I like I said before, I, I, every round I felt like he was just decreasing. And uh, my pop, kept, when I came back to the corner, my pop kept saying, "Just you know, have fun a little bit, you know, don't look for it." And I wasn't looking for it. I just I was chilling, like you know, I was in there just trying to find my groove, you know, get back in the groove. And uh, and I I wound up catching him and start having my fun a little bit in four or five rounds, the fourth and the fifth round, and uh. That was it, you know, uh, so she wrote. Oh. oh, okay. Chris Murray from the Philadelphia Sunday Sun and from WURD Radio. We like to, we'd love to have you on the show at some point. But my, my question to you is your father said last year that, you know, there are so many, lim so many levels to your potential. Mm -hmm. For you to come out, you know, somewhat, you know, after that year layoff mm -hmm. and put on the performance – that you put on tonight. I mean, what is? What, how do you feel about how you know how good you can be in you know at, at this level? Uh, I feel like I can be phenomenal. Like I said, um, so for a year, you know, um, and I got many more tools and many more things, you know, in my arsenal. I just gotta, you know, get the opportunity to, you know, show it and sh show it against a, you know, a top guy. So. And Bozy, what are, you, what are your thoughts about that? Just the, looking at tonight. Seeing, you know, just really how good that not a, a little bit of ring rust, but he, you know, but yeah. but, but he, he, it was an impressive finish. Uh, I, I thought he did a, a great job for being out uh, a year, you know, and um, I told him to do that. What he was doing inside, I said, fight him inside, break him down inside. Then I told him box a little bit, you know what I mean? Then break him down, and I told him eventually he won't he won't wind up uh, stopping, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I knew he's gonna quit. If he wasn't gonna quit, he was gonna get knocked out cold. Hey Boots, over here. It's, uh, right here. Hey, how you doing? Uh, What's going on? Great, great win tonight. Appreciate um, it. It's uh, Vince the Writer, Boxing News 24. Um, initially, you were supposed to fight uh, Crawley, mm -hmm. and then uh, Avenesian stepped in. Um, describe the process you had to go through as far as your training for a different opponent. No different. Uh, yeah, it wasn't no different. You know, like I always say, we are. Uh, we got every style in in my camps. We got southpaws, orthodox, pressure fighters, boxers, tall, short, everything. So we prepare for anything because you never know what a guy might do. Like like tonight, Amnesian really wasn't really putting pressure like that for for real. He was coming, but he wasn't jumping in. He was <laughs> oh. He was walking forward. He was he was walking forward. He was walking forward. He wasn't walking forward like how he usually do. So. You know, uh, everybody. Every, every time somebody fight me, they change their whole style up. So, you know. You, I'll tell you what. I'm not sure about you, look. <laughs> Yo, last question. <laughs> this, this question for Boots. Yo. Uh, boots. 
Any thoughts? So not non-boxing related. Donald, Donald Trump got into <laughs> incident PA today. He got shot. What are your thoughts? What? We, we, yeah. yeah. They tried yeah. to assassinate him. Yeah, Trump. he got shot. He got shot, shot at. He didn't get shot. Where? Two people died at his rally. In PA. Yeah. In, in PA. Butler, western part of Pennsylvania. You lying. Nah. No, yeah. for real. Drawing you. boots. Why would I be lying? Yo. <laughs> What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> you Donald up. Trump got shot. What are your thoughts on that? We ain't got nothing to do with that. Yeah, I ain't. Yeah, I ain't. Uh, yeah. And on that, ladies and gentlemen, still <laughs> IVF world champion, Jerome Boots Ennis. <laughs> yeah, what? Thank you so much, everybody, for all your support. We'll be back soon. Thank <laughs> he you. said Donald Great Trump. <laughs> what, they, what they got to do with boxing? <laughs> Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.